Hey everybody, I wanted to take a look at peer grade. It's a new tool that I've been using in my classes. I want to talk about why I like it, the need that I feel that is it is filling in my classes. Um, in a subsequent video, in a couple of videos, I'll show how I set things up. But I want to give you an overview of what peer grade does um, so that you can sort of think about whether or not this is meaningful for you in your classroom. So the reason why I love peer grade is in most of my classes, and once again, I teach in, in teacher ed. So in most of my classes, I have students, they create work. They do most of, if not all of their work in Google Docs. They create those Google Docs. In some of the classes, they will add and, ed and iterate and revise and edit those Google Docs throughout the course. In some of the classes, they will work on it in groups or individually and then send their work to their peers to give and get a little bit of feedback and then they'll send it off to me. Many times I will uh, either just take the feedback given by their peers and count that as the grade or the score, or in some other assignments I will also add feedback and, and give uh, feedback in the work and then give an assignment, uh, give a grade, my own assessment for it. But for the most part, students are working in Google Docs, they're sharing materials. I want to facilitate these opportunities where they can give and get feedback to each other on their work. In the past, this has been, for the most part, a nightmare. Um, I use Google Docs, Drive, Classroom. Classroom does an okay job of, you know, having assignments and students can submit work and submit assignments. But the problem is if you want to build in a feedback loop where students have to like submit work and then submit it again, it's really, really hard and it's um, a bit uh, confusing for the students. In the past, what I would do is I would have groups of students in the classroom organize Google Drive folders and they would share these pieces of work to the folder and then I'd say, okay, you have 24 hours, 48 hours to give each other feedback and then uh, submit it to me. That was also problematic and very few students actually went in and gave each other feedback. So what peer grade will do is it will have students submit work um, when the assignment opens up. They go in and it automatically sorts work around the classroom. It sorts work around the classroom. They give and get feedback there and then it has a time that it's all due. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour to see like one assignment that I've used in the past and see what it looks like. So I'm going to sign in with Google. I'm going to sign in with my university credentials um, because I've already used this for classes. When you first start, they'll give you a, a pro or a paid plan. Um, we can take a quick look to see what you get. Um, so I can have, you know, a K-12 plan and I have uh, different options that I can use. My institution does not use peer grade as of yet, um, but we'll see if they do after I test it out a little bit. So I'm going to take a look at an old class. It's pretty easy to go in and create a new class. What's nice is if you already use Google Classroom, this can connect over to Classroom if you're signing with your Google account and see what classes you have. So that's a really nice add-on feature. If you're already using Drive and Google Docs and Google Classroom, the nice thing is that it can peer grade can connect right over and see what you're using, what you are already using, uh, and that will bring over your students, your assignments, whatever you want. And the nice thing is, um, when you create things in peer grade, it will create those announcements over in Classroom so that students know what is in store, or when things are due, and stuff like that. So it plugs in nicely. It does sort of the same thing with Clever as well. You can always create a new class and test drive it if you want, or copy an existing one if you don't want to use Classroom or any of those other pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into an old class, an old assignment that I had. So if I go into this section from last year, I had one assignment that I test drove last year to see what would happen. Um, and what's nice is I can go into create an assignment, I can give it a title, I can give a description for this, and I can upload a file, sort of like what is the model or exemplar you know, that you want students to take a look at. You're also going to want to add a rubric for this and then a template. So if I go in and I look at this assignment that I had in the past, I can see this synthesis. I can see when this was open. So I opened this on the 22nd of October. 
closed it two days later, basically gave them 24 hours, 48 hours to do the work. Um, so they would submit the work and then a feedback uh, period opened for three days. So they had two days to finish the work and submit it. Then the feedback point opened uh, and then they had three days to give each other feedback. You can see uh, not very many students turned in the work, not many students gave feedback. So that was one of the problematic pieces where students are trying to figure out, okay, what does this all mean? Because they're not used to, at least my students were not used to, giving each other feedback on their work. They wanted all of the feedback to come from the instructor. Um, and that's not the way that my classes operate. Um, so one of the things I want to look at is if I can go into settings, you can see the information that I shared. So I said it's a synthesis post. They are to reflect on these materials. I didn't have a file because I say you submit this via Google Doc. Um, I also included, uh, we could take a look at the results tab while we're here. Actually, let's go to rubric. So if I look at the rubric, these were synthesis posts. So the students were capturing their reflections and writing about it and reflecting on their readings for the week. And so my rubric was pretty simple. You know, what's something they did well, something they can improve upon. Uh, is the post three to 500 words? Did they include hyperlinks? And then do they have uh, multimodal content in the posts? So this was basically every two weeks, every module, they would have content that they would read and synthesize and reflect. And then here they would submit it and share it to each other in peer grade, get a little bit of feedback. And then in this class, I would basically allow them to take the feedback, revise and submit it to me. Now, in my current use of peer grade, what I'm going to do is have the students review it, give each other feedback, and then that will be their score. Um, I felt like it was a little bit of a redundant uh, element to, I would give them, you know, their peers would give them feedback, and then I would also give them feedback and score it. I said, you know, let's just use the feedback from your peers and move on. I have other assignments I'm giving, uh, you know, feedback and, and scores for. If we take a look at the settings, um, so I can see how many submissions uh, I can see, uh, you know, how many I set it up. So each student would have to review three submissions and you can see the rubric that I have there. It's pretty quick for them to go through and give feedback. If I take a look at groups, um, that's a, a pro feature, not really something that I needed. I can look at categories. Once again, a pro feature, my rubric, um, you can pull other rubrics down, uh, you know, public rubrics that people have shared to peer grade. I believe when I created that syllabus, I mean, that rubric, that was something that was already out there and I just created it and modified it. And under advanced, I can go in and I can flag, uh, you know, some uh, questionable uh, pieces of feedback that students give each other. Um, so once again, this is peer grade. Uh, I really value it. So the nice thing about this is for me, my class, uh, my classes focus on collaboration and co-construction, and I wanted to empower my students to, you know, edit and revise and give feedback and critique each other. Um, I think that's a, a fundamental part of my epistemological stance. You know, I think that it's important that I be a healthy, reflective, uh, you know, practitioner in my classroom, but then also my students can hear and see me reflecting and think about their own practice and critique each other as well. Um, and so, especially in this class here, and especially in the technology class, I want them to submit work to each other and give and get feedback and not expect that the teacher is going to have all and bestow all the knowledge on others. But that's just the, the, you know, the, the perspectives that guide that class. So peer grade does a great job of sort of creating that sandbox or creating those filters so that students can submit work to an area. The system will submit the workout and say, okay, take a look at this and give feedback. Um, and then it will send that back to the students with their feedback so they can improve. And then I can see what are the scores that the students received and what do they need to work on. So I can use it as a formative assessment. But then at the same time, I can keep, keep those scores and put them into my gradebook. And for these reflection posts, the scores are anywhere between two, three, or five points. So they're not a lot of points, but it's a good way to sort of like keep track of what students are doing and, and how they're paying attention. So once again, that's peer grade, um, valuable tool for me. Hopefully you check it out in the future.
uh, more videos on how I set it up, what it looks like for the students, and stuff like that. So thanks again.